Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 512, Reduced Breast Cancer Incidence in Women Treated with Subcutaneous Testosterone. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So there are a number of ways that someone can receive testosterone supplementation or replacement in their body. You can get a shot, you can take uh, a cream or a gel. The method that Dr. Maupin uses in her office at BioBalance Health is subcutane- subcutaneous pellet insertion. They make micronized, they don't make, the, they, they get from compounding laboratories, non-mi- micronized, non-micronized. Non- non-micronized, non-micronized uh, pellets that they insert in the fat tissue of your hip. And it creates an on-demand reservoir of testosterone or testosterone plus A, which is an estrazole, we'll talk about that in a minute, what it is, that your body draws on on, on a three or four month period or for women and up to six months for men so that you have a regular steady production. You don't have any compliance concerns. You don't have to remember when to take it or how to use it or how much of it to use or take. You don't have to ups and downs as your body metabolizes over the course of the day. You just have what you need when you need it. Once they find the proper dosage for you, they keep you at that level for that time period, and then you start to drop off because you've used up that reservoir. So you have to come back in three times a year for women, twice a year for men, and get a reestablishment of that reservoir. Mm -hmm. And what they have found in particular is that this type of delivery system helps prevent the development of breast cancer in women, helps cure people who have some kinds of breast cancers and other concerns uh, or have a history of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And that, that is conversationally somewhat controversial, but medically, Less and less so. Mm-hmm. More and more doctors are starting to look at the research and understand mm-hmm. it and agree with what you're doing and why and how mm-hmm. the methodology. Many of the breast cancer uh, surgeons and doctors uh-huh. approve testosterone replacement with pellets uh, and with or without an astrazole for their patients who have had breast cancer to prevent a recurrence because they're starting to see articles mm-hmm. and research that show that taking testosterone as in pellet form actually does prevent the recurrence of a breast cancer. So it behooves them to uh, allow their patients and not, and not say, don't do this. I mean, many times if we have an estrogen receptor cancer, positive cancer, then we can't give estrogen. And there are a lot of symptoms of not being able to take estrogen if somebody has had estrogen their whole life. And then they get breast cancer, they get their ovaries removed, they don't have estrogen anymore. And then they have all these hot flashes, night sweats, miserable uh, kind of life. And so testosterone treats those symptoms that estrogen used to treat, and so it makes their life better, and it prevents a recurrence. So um, there's there's a researcher who does a lot of research on testosterone pellets, non micronized testosterone pellets. And her name is Rebecca Glazer. She's in Ohio as we speak. And um, she does a lot of research on pellets themselves and how they actually work in terms of side effects and preventing disease and making women healthier as they go. And she, she is one of the people who says, who supports the fact that we have more testosterone than estrogen. So why is it not our hormone too? Because, and she thinks that we need to have it replaced mm-hmm. after menopause. And even for premenopausal women, she thinks that testosterone plus anastrozole can help people with endometriosis, which I've seen, and, uh, and people with polycystic ovaries, which I, I've seen that too. It helps those types of conditions in premenopausal women 
actually get better and be resolved. Oftentimes, fibroids will shrink as well, and they will then not have to have a hysterectomy or some other big procedure. Mm -hmm. So it's also a treatment for young women who haven't gone through menopause uh, for that, but it also, so it helps other things, but it prevents breast cancer. And she's shown in, in the study she did in 2013, where she had, I, I forget how many women years, um, that five... 5,688, um, I think. Women years. Yeah. That they studied, and they actually proved their point in half the time as that they had planned on proving their point, that testosterone decreases Right, the study was supposed to go risk. from 2008 to 2018. Mm -hmm. They cut it off in 2013 because they had the results that right. made the case that they were looking for. So they had a lot less breast cancer... Uh, occur in their patients who are on testosterone or on testosterone plus anastrozole. Anastrozole is an enzyme blocker that blocks testosterone from making estrogens, so being converted into estrogens. So somebody who has an estrogen, um, uh, an estrogen receptor positive cancer would take anastrozole orally. Oral actually um, gives you arthritis, makes your hands hurt in most people. So giving it a, as a pellet doesn't. So, so it you, helps you those mentioned people. the term a couple of times. I stumbled over it and you corrected me. Mm -hmm. Explain what is a micronized versus a non-micronized pellet. Okay, so testosterone, um, it, the testosterone pellets are made in a compounding pharmacy. But testosterone tablets that you put in the vagina or under your tongue to dissolve, uh, to be absorbed, actually are made with micronized testosterone and pellets should not be made with micronized testosterone. Micronized is testosterone powder rolled in little balls basically so that they last longer because if you put something under your tongue generally it's going to be gone in three or four hours at the very most and so it doesn't sustain through the day. So they make it micronized, these little tiny powder into, into, into balls that then circulate through your system longer. So what that does is it increases the rate of side effects. It increases, it causes hair loss instead of preventing hair loss, like the powder uh, that's pressured, pressurized into a pellet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a different kind of testosterone. It should not be used in pellets. And that's, there's a lot of um, uh, different companies that have now sprouted up across America that are using pellets that have uh, micronized testosterone. And those are the ones that come in and say, I never want testosterone again because it did blank, blank, blank. Mm -hmm. And it gave them hair all over their body and it did all kinds of things. That's a completely different thing than what I do with testosterone powder in the pellets. So, so you have to know what's in the pellets. You have to ask the doctor and you have to trust the doctor tells you the truth or even knows the difference. Right. But this was, this study was done with the powdered pellets like I use. They're under pressure, and so they dissolve. Basically, they're the exact same surface area, same size every time you get them. They are uniformly made, and as the blood flows around them, they dissolve like licking a lollipop, you know, dissolve yeah. around the outside. Yeah. So the larger they are, the bigger the surface area, the more dissolve, or the more you get in your system. But the uh, rate of your blood flow is how you control how much testosterone you get. So if I go work out, and my blood flow, my cardiac output is high, then I'm going to absorb a lot more testosterone from my pellet mm -hmm. than if I have, um, if I sit at home and watch TV. What about stress? If I'm under more stress, will I metabolize more? Yep. And, and when, if you're under more stress, and you have that causes your cortisol to go up, and your cortisol makes a protein or, or stimulates the production of a protein that binds up testosterone. So stress. So is not a, only do I burn it faster. It's not as usable because it gets right. bound up. Yeah, it, it's inactivated by the, the uh, cortisol uh, binding protein, okay. CBG, or CBP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so so that that's what I'm not usually measuring. So that's mm -hmm. fine. Anyway, um, that's that's kind of a brief and very um, <laughs> and very. Uh, you probably didn't need to know all that, but you do need to know. Ask your your um, doctor if they're using the powdered or or the micronized, and and if they don't know, then don't get your pellets, <laughs> and then let them find out. Talk to the pharmacy and make sure that they they're getting the powdered before you get them because you don't want the side effects. Well, you found that out 
almost by accident because you had some patients that were on pellets that were having beneficial results and then their results changed. Mm -hmm. And you hadn't changed their dosage, they hadn't changed their lifestyle, nothing was mm -hmm. different. So you contacted the uh, compounding pharmacy. Actually, it was a compounding pharmacy that was in town that wanted my practice. So I used them on myself and on a few of my employees and a few of my patients. And honestly, they were, it was, it was a bad experience. I mean, I, we stopped using them immediately and, and said this, is, and they wouldn't admit that it was micronized. I mean, it, it took a lot of time and effort to, to find out what happened. Yeah. But we found out that they were micronized and that was not, that was terrible. It was, it, it was something that I hadn't really anticipated. I thought they were all powder. So were there just not the beneficial effects that you were used to getting, or were there adverse effects that were starting to happen? There were the beneficial effects. Some of them were there, but then people start. I started losing hair, mm -hmm. and then I started getting hair. I mean, it makes a lot more DHT. So I started getting hair on my face. Uh, you know, it was it was not pleasant, and not, no amount of spironolactone would prevent that. It just was. It just kept traveling through my body, making more and more DHT. It, the uh, results and the good stuff went down faster, too, because it's being made into something else right. and, not, and the, not just pure testosterone. So that was something that, yeah, we learned. That was many years ago, and we learned the hard way that way. I mean, I bought a wig. Wow. And if you remember that conference where I spoke um, about pellets, and about testosterone for women, they had they had a, a question and answer panel afterwards, mm -hmm. and everybody kept asking me about what happened, why why are my you know what can we do about our patients like losing their hair yeah. drastically, and I'm like, that doesn't happen to me. Remember they uh, they were yeah. they kept asking me questions that are side effects of at the time I I didn't really capture that they were talking about micronized testosterone, right. but they were yes, and so. I got it by the end. I had so many questions about bad stuff from pellets, which I don't ever see that, you know, I finally caught on and said, oh, I know that I know what what the problem is. Yeah. Is that the, this one um, uh, franchise of testosterone doctors was using the wrong pellets. I don't know if they still do or not, but it took they, they were as of last year. I don't know if they do now. Yeah. But that but that's a huge difference to have side effects from one kind of pellet that you don't get from another. It's, it's really an apples and oranges comparison, it micronized is. versus non-micronized, even though it's both testosterone pellets. Right, but it's the same thing as what happens when everybody says, all testosterone's bad. Right. Well, oral testosterone is bad for you. Oral testosterone acts completely different than pellets or sublingual or creams or gels. They all act different, and they all produce other uh, byproducts or different byproducts than one another. So you cannot compare them as equals. They're mm -hmm. apples and oranges. So if you say, if you've had one kind and you didn't like it, then that doesn't mean you're not going to like pellets because pellets are like your body used to make. Your body used to make testosterone before you got to 40 and it slowly goes away. Or if your ovaries are taken out, those are my most happy patients. They have an abrupt drop in testosterone and then they actually come in going, oh, my, I don't feel like myself. This is terrible. And then they get their testosterone and they're back to normal. So, so that, you know, the abrupt change in the, pe in the pellets, testosterone, they did, a lot of them have tried everything else, other kinds of testosterone that didn't work. Mm -hmm. But the pellets do. Pellets do. So going back to the issue of breast cancer mm -hmm. and testosterone, because that so many conversations that you've had through the years with women who were terrified of the concept because mm -hmm. they had, were afraid if they had breast cancer, they were going to die from it. Right. And they didn't trust hormone replacement because of the mm -hmm. Women's Health Initiative that, right. uh, of, what was it, 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, this research from 2008 to 2013 mm -hmm. says very clearly we can prevent the occurrence of breast cancer mm -hmm. and we can help people who have had breast cancer avoid a reoccurrence mm -hmm. of it. And that's mm -hmm. just looking at testosterone and testosterone plus anastrozole. Right. But there are other factors that are evaluated mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms mm -hmm. of looking at breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And I was reading this and, and asking you to explain it to yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> you can read it again if you like. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I might need to, okay. yeah. 
Uh, many of the studies fail to isolate testosterone from the circulating estrogens or account for local aromatization to estrogens. In addition, they do not address the known insulin inflammation cancer connection, mm -hmm. insulin stimulation of T production, or the insulin stimulated increase in aromatase activity, including locally in the breast, all of which would in contribute to increased cancer risk. So what are they talking about with insulin when we're talking about testosterone? Is that just a totally so sidebar? So when we found that when you when women lose their testosterone, they become insulin resistant. Okay. So they gain fat, they get hypoglycemia after meals, they can't diet it away, and the more fat they gain, the more insulin resistant they gain they get without testosterone and also without estrogen. So when you then you hit menopause and it gets worse because you get more insulin resistant and fatter, and the fatter you get and the more insulin resistance you get, the more breast cancer you're at risk for. The biggest risk in my mind, of breast cancer is obesity, and we also have a, a problem with that. Right. You know, that's and and that's because fat makes estrone, the old lady estrogen, and it can make estradiol as well, the young woman's estrogen, and that will stimulate a cancer that's already there. The now, estradiol, or, or both of them can stimulate them. the cancer that's already there. It doesn't cause a cell to, to become abnormal, but insulin resistance can. Yes. And so, so insulin resistance, obesity, and what else did they say? They have, did they have on uh, there? They had that, insulin uh, stimulation of T production. Oh, and inflammation. And mm -hmm. the inflammation, you, the fatter you get, the more inflammation you have. So inflammation breaks down your tissues, and it decreases your ability to actually kill a cancer cell so that it doesn't grow. So testosterone decreases inflammation. When we do CRPs to test for inflammation before and after pellets, if it's high, it always comes down. It may not be normal, but it always decreases. So that's one of the things that testosterone does. So in reading this research, and this is from a journal that's published in England called Maturitis. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that correctly? Maturitis. Uh, and a lot of the more current research does seem to be appearing in the British journals and the European journals more so than the American journals. Don't know why that's so. But one of the conclusions that they reach is not only does subcutaneous pellet insertions protect you from breast cancer, but that you must stay on them. You have mm -hmm. to continue to, to receive them. And as long as you continue to receive them, they continue to keep you safe. So those are factors of which you should be aware when you consider whether or not hormone replacement therapy is something you want to consider, and especially when you look at the methodology for the replacement. The best research, the best results seem to be those that come from non-micronized subcutaneous pellets of testosterone or testosterone with anastrozole. That's right, and it doesn't, and estrogen added to it or taken away from it doesn't really matter. Some people need some estrogen, we try to keep the estrogen level a lot lower than the testosterone level because that's the way it is when we're young. You have to find the right balance of all of those things. Right. So having somebody with experience doing this is always important. Yes. Because that that because we've been doing it for so long, we already know what to do. It's kind of it's a reflex. We know how to manage the dosages. And we go by symptom relief. Right. We follow your symptoms. And they also said in this that there's very low risks of side effects. Mm-hmm. They didn't even see hair loss. They saw, they saw that you grow hair with testosterone. So that old, that old um, adage that testosterone makes your hair fall out, that's guys, and it's a whole different thing. It has to do with receptor sites and, and their genetics, and, and that's not women. Well, and there's another one about women who get uh, deeper voices because right. they're on testosterone. And this and same researcher did, did research on it and said, we can just lower the dose, it, it comes right back. That's a dose issue. Well, and it's a rare phenomenon. It's yeah. not most women. It's mm -hmm. not even many women. No. It's, I mean, my, I've been on this 18 years, and I, yeah. I don't have a low voice. That's not, that's yeah. not me. So that's, that wasn't one of my side effects. Well, I think you told me once that the one or two people that you had treated over mm -hmm. an 18-year period that had that as a side effect mm -hmm. were people that were professional voices, mm -hmm. whether they were singers or public speakers mm -hmm. or TV and radio announcers, mm -hmm. people that used their voices and were much more attuned to all of the, mm -hmm. uh, the sound issues and health issues around their voice. And it's dose-related. One person, I can remember two, out of all the patients that we've treated. So one person had 
um, injury to her vocal cord several times, and she had a job where she needed her voice to speak in front of people, and that was something that by lowering the dose, it, it would have helped whatever testosterone contributed to it, but she already had voice issues anyway. Yeah. So, so it wasn't really the testosterone, although because testosterone was added, she was thinking about it more and more aware of it. The other, pa the other patient was a singer, and we just lowered the dose, and she was fine. So as always, we are concerned about helping you become informed consumers of your own health care. And we want you not to follow the mass hysteria, do the research, find out what the evidence shows, the evidence shows that subcutaneous testosterone pellet injections can protect you from breast cancer. So please look at the evidence. Talk to your physician. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.